This demo covers uh, managing your parts and labors. Uh, this demo assumes you're the administrator. So let's go to the admin center and get started. Once in the admin center, you want to click on the parts and labor button. The parts and labor interface looks similar whether you're the admin or whether it's time to add a part and or labor to a ticket. Uh, right now we're in the admin center and we have additional options which are add a part, view inactive parts, or watch a video, this video here. Inactive parts are parts that were used in prior tickets that are no longer used anymore. They are kept around in order to display correctly very old tickets. When adding or searching for a part, you have the choice of searching for an active or inactive part. Searching for a part requires a partial string of either the description or the unique item ID. I'm just going to type in the letter A to get all my parts that contain an A. And then click Submit to begin the search. Here are all parts that contain the letter A. The first column is the part description. The second column is the quantity in stock, which is optional. The third column is the unique part ID, which is also optional. The next column is how much the part costs new. The next column is how much the part costs used. The next column is if there's any associated labor, meaning that if I'm going to replace a disk drive, it's always, you know, 45 bucks. Um, and the final column is a column that allows you to edit the individual part. Notice the parentheses T on certain items, which means that part is taxable. Let's see what it looks like when you want to edit a part. When adding or editing a part, the only actual required item is the part description. All other items are optional. The unique item ID is optional, and it could be uh, the actual part number, the SKU number, what have you. If you want to track um, inventory, you can enter in a quantity in stock, and as the parts are used, the quantity in stock goes down, so you can keep a running total of your parts. Uh, the location bin is optional. It says it's in the back room, the storage, you know, a lot of different shops have a lot of different locations for parts. The wholesale cost is what it costs you to obtain it. The cost new is what it costs the customer to obtain it. The cost used, if you sell used parts, is optional. And then the taxable means whether or not the part is taxable. And it's taxed according to your default tax in your store settings. And then finally, there's an associated labor cost, which may or may not be, you know, applied, uh, like some things are a fixed fee and you can add in an associated labor cost. So let's do some quick edits here. The used price is wrong for this part so I'm going to go ahead and change that and then save my changes. Once an edit is made it lists all the parts and highlights the part that you just edited so that you can pick it out and say yep that's exactly what I wanted. There's a bogus test part up there at the top that I want to get rid of, so I'm going to go ahead and set that as inactive. Once I saved it, it shows all the inactive parts and highlights the part you just changed with red indicating inactive. Now let's see how the interface behaves when you're adding a brand new part. I'll go back to the initial parts search area and let's say I want to add a power cord. Let's see what that looks like. Repair Tracks comes back with no part matched, but it gives you a little hyperlink that says add part power cord to your parts list. That's exactly what I want to do. This screen should look familiar and all I got to do is fill it in, so let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and enhance my search string to reflect the true part description that I want to see displayed. And then I'll set some prices. And submit to save my changes. Bar she blows. Now let's see how this interface looks on the ticket side of things. Back to the main menu first and then over to tickets. Let's view that first ticket. 
I'm going to scroll down just a bit. On the work log, it says a bad power supply from the diagnostic results. I'm going to go ahead and start working on this item. First, I'll modify the work log. This will reflect that I'm now working on this item. The work log has been updated. And now I'll scroll down a bit and add the power supply as a part. Let's see how that's done. This looks familiar. I know I have to search for the part, so I know the part contains power. So I'll just enter in power. Repair tracks found two matches, but I know which one I want, so now I'm going to select it. I have both new and used power supplies, but I know I'm going to add a new one for this customer, so I'm going to select new. When I do, I should see the new price of 125, not the used price of 65, and I should also see the associated labor cost of $45. That's a fixed flat fee to replace a power supply. And that's exactly what I see. At this time, you also have the choice of warranty status. Uh, let me show you those options. As you can see, there are two options. One is no, not under warranty, and the other one is yes, under warranty. If you select yes, the price and cost is hidden on the printout. Submit to save. And scroll down a bit. And there we go. We have our power supply. It's $125. It's taxable. And we have our labor, associated labor. Uh, quantity of one. Uh, it's not taxable. The tax is calculated. And the current running total of the ticket is presented. This ticket is done, so I'm going to close it out. Click Submit to save my changes, and that's it. We're done.